the desire for knowledge and the love of mystery are two of the most powerful human impulses and Stonehenge satisfies both at once. That is why it has never lost its hold on our imagination or our curiosity. It is the most famous megalithic structure in the world, instantly recognizable from the sketchiest of outlines and visited by over half a million people a year. Yet after more than a millennium of speculation and investigation we still have no certain idea of what it is or why it was built. By 1695 the anti-quarry Edmund Gibson was already complaining that Stonehenge is so singular and receives so little light from history that almost everyone has advanced a new notion. 300 years later there has been considerably more light and many more notions, but few secure answers. Stonehenge is the ruin of a single great prehistoric stone building. The huge weathered blocks are simply shaped and arranged in deceptively simple geometric shapes and, so far as we can tell, have always been undecorated. As it now stands, the monument is a physical wreck, a tight huddle of midgree stones dwarfed by an expanse of open, rolling plain. It is an overwhelming presence, a masterpiece of art and engineering in which gigantic force and minute delicacy combine with its beauty and strangeness. Looming like a group of huddled stone giants on Salisbury Plain, Wiltshire, in southern England, Stonehenge is perhaps the most recognizable ancient monument in the world. The name Stonehenge originates from Anglo-Saxon and roughly translates as hanging stones. But the history of the great monument dates back thousands of years before the Saxons came to Britain, sometime in the 5th century and its origins go back beyond the mysterious Celtic Druids of the last few centuries BC, before iron was known in Europe, and before the Great Pyramid was erected in the sands of Egypt. Who built this enigmatic stone monument and what role did it play in the prehistoric landscape of England and Europe all those thousands of years ago? What visitors see today when they visit Stonehenge is a circular setting of large standing stones surrounded by earthworks, the remnants of the last in a series of monuments erected on the site between c. 3100 BC and 1600 BC. During this period, Stonehenge was built in three broad construction phases, although there is evidence for human activity on the site both before and after these dates. In fact, one of the most important and fascinating discoveries ever made in the area of Stonehenge was that of four large Mesolithic pits or post holes dating to between 8500 and 7650 BC found beneath the modern car park at the site. These huge post holes had a diameter of around 2.4 feet, and had once held pine posts. Three of the holes were aligned east to west, suggesting a ritual function it has been suggested that they may have held totem poles, and indeed it is difficult to see what other purpose they could have served. The area around Stonehenge is full of prehistoric monuments, a number of which were constructed in the early Neolithic period and thus predate the Stonehenge monument. Thus, when the builders of the first stage of construction at Stonehenge began work, they were already operating in a sacred landscape, one that had seen ritual use for more than 5,000 years. The first of Stonehenge's three construction phases was begun around 3100 BC and consisted of a circle of timber posts surrounded by a ditch and bank. This henge, measured approximately 360 feet in diameter, and possessed a large entrance to the northeast and another smaller one to the south. This monument was dug by hand using deer antlers and the shoulder blades of oxen or cattle. Modern excavations of the ditch have recovered antlers used in the construction that were deliberately left behind by the builders of this monument. One odd fact about this phase is that there were other animal bones, mainly from cattle, placed in the bottom of the ditch, which proved to be 200 years older than the antler tools used to dig the structure. It seems that the people who buried the items kept them for some time before burial, perhaps the bones were sacred objects removed from a previous ritual location and brought to Stonehenge. There is little remaining evidence for phase 2 at Stonehenge, 
Though judging by finds of cremated bones from at least 200 bodies, the site must have functioned as a cremation cemetery. Phase 3 at the site, beginning around 2600 BC, involved the rebuilding of the simple earth and timber henge in stone. Two concentric circles of 80 bluestone pillars were erected at the center of the monument. These stones, weighing about 4 tons each, were carved and transported from the Priestley Hills in Pembrokeshire, southwest Wales, and brought by a route at least 186 miles long. Apart from the blue stones, a 16-foot-long blue-gray sandstone, now known as the Altar Stone, was brought to Stonehenge from near Milford Haven on the coast to the south of the Priestley Hills. How the blue stones arrived on Salisbury Plain is a subject of much controversy, though most archaeologists nowadays believe that they were brought there by men. The most obvious way for the builders of Stonehenge to transport the stones would have been to drag them down to the sea at Milford Haven by roller and sledge, and then float them to Stonehenge on rafts by sea and river an incredible achievement of organization and dedication. An experiment to duplicate this feat was undertaken in 2001, when volunteers managed to pull a three-ton stone down to the sea from the Priestley Hills in a wooden sledge on rollers, but when the stone was placed on the raft it slipped into the sea and sank. Intriguingly, an old legend held that Stonehenge originated with Merlin the Wizard, who had a huge structure known as the Giant's Dance magically transported from Ireland. It was also in Phase 3 at Stonehenge that the northeastern entrance to the enclosure was widened so that it precisely aligned with the midsummer sunrise and midwinter sunset of the period. Another feature added to the Stonehenge landscape during this phase was the avenue, a ceremonial pathway consisting of a parallel pair of ditches and banks stretching for 1.86 miles from the monument down to the River Avon. Around 2300 BC the blue stones were dug up and replaced by enormous sarsen stones brought from the Marlborough Downs, 20 miles away. The sarsens, each around 13.5 feet high, 6.8 feet wide, and weighing around 25 tons, were arranged in a 108 foot diameter circle with lintels, horizontal stones, spanning the tops. Within this circle a horseshoe-shaped setting of five trilithons, two large stones set upright to support a third on their top, of dressed sarsen stone, was added, its open end facing northeast. The enormous stones, which made up the central horseshoe arrangement of ten uprights and five lintels, weighed up to 50 tons each. Later in this period, between 2280 to 1930 BC, the blue stones were re-erected and arranged at least three times, finally forming an inner circle and horseshoe between the sarsen circle and the trilithons, mirroring the two arrangements of sarsen stones. It is thought that more blue stones were transported from Wales to the site at this time. After 1600 BC there was no further construction at Stonehenge, and the monument appears to have been abandoned. Nevertheless, the site was still occasionally visited, as is evidenced by finds of Iron Age pottery, Roman coins, and the burial of a decapitated Saxon man dated to the 7th century at. There has been considerable speculation as to how Stonehenge was built. An experiment in the 1990s showed that a team of 200 people, using a wooden sledge on laid timber rails covered with grease, could have transported all 80 sarsens from the Marlborough Downs to Stonehenge in two years, or longer if the work was seasonal. The experiment illustrated that the maneuvering of the stones into position could have been accomplished using timber A-frames to raise the stones, which could then have been hauled upright by teams of people using ropes. The lintels may have been raised up gradually on timber platforms and levered into position when the primitive scaffolding reached the top of the upright stones. A fascinating aspect of the construction of Stonehenge is that the stones were worked using carpentry techniques. After being hammered to size using stone balls known as mauls, examples of which have been found at the site, the stones were fashioned with mortise and tenon joints so that the lintels could rest securely on top of the uprights. 
the lintels themselves were joined together using another woodworking method known as the tongue in groove joint. Much more interesting than how Stonehenge was built is why it was built. Unfortunately, for such an important structure the archaeological finds from Stonehenge have been relatively meager. This is partly due to the fact that until the last couple of decades research at the site had been, on the whole, poorly performed and insufficiently documented. Skeletons were lost or seriously damaged, artifacts misplaced, and excavation notes destroyed. Despite these losses, the evidence from surviving burials discovered at or near the site gives a fascinating insight into the lives of early Bronze Age peoples in the area. The main burials at Stonehenge are all broadly contemporary with each other, dating from 2400 BC 2150 BC, the early Bronze Age period. Another astonishing burial was found in 2002 at Amesbury, 2.8 miles southeast of Stonehenge, and has become known as either the Amesbury Archer or the King of Stonehenge. The rich goods found with this burial indicate a high-status individual, and include five beaker pots, 16 beautifully worked flint arrowheads, several boar tusks, two sandstone wrists, a pair of gold hair ornaments, three tiny copper knives, and a flint napping kit and metal working tools. Not only are the gold objects the oldest ever found in Britain, but this person may have been one of the earliest metal workers in the islands. Stonehenge today is a work of art and science, of poetry, astronomy, and literature that reflects back to us the centuries that have passed over it. This creation remains a mystery, and the archaic place is considered special, unlike any other, with rings of earth and stone, as if waiting for the snow and ice to return again and the earth to be empty of people once more. Thank you for watching.